Hey, how you going there? This is Bryn Smythe with the Bryn Smythe Music Workshop. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about phaser effects or phaser pedals. So first of all, you know, what is a phaser effect? Well, when you play an instrument, you know, bass, guitar, you know, trombone, xylophone, anything like that, whatever, the sound, the sound you make on that instrument goes in a waveform, so it kind of travels like that. What the phaser effect does is it splits that signal into two. So you've got your normal, you've got your first signal, which kind of goes like that, like you, like it normally does. But the second one actually does that wave form, and it just starts in a different spot, starts in a different position. So instead of you know going upwards like that, what it might do is it might start higher up and go downwards instead. So it's going to create. Um, it's when you put those two signals together, it creates sort of like a whooshing sort of sound. And that's what that's called. It's called being, you know, the signals are basically out of phase, hence the phaser effect. So that's basically what it's talking about. And then what they've done is they've condensed it down into a pedal so you can basically use that effect on demand. I think it's a really, really cool thing to do. It's one of my favorite effects. So what I'm going to show you today, I'm going to show you two uh, drastically different pedals on how they do this, how, how they do the phaser effect. And uh, yeah, I'll play it for you and just you can see and hear how drastic they sound. So let's have a look. Once I get this off. There we go. Now, the ones that I'm going to show you today, uh, this is, hold on, let's get to it. There we go. This is the MXR Phase 100. Now this one is really, really lush, really durable. So this sounds fantastic. It's a, it's a 10 stage phaser. So it takes about 10 stages for the cycle to go through. But otherwise, it's only got two knobs, which is actually quite rare for um, phaser effects especially. Um, MXR also produced the phase 90, which is only just one knob, which is a speed, which is the rate knob, the speed knob. This one, the phase 100, has two knobs. The extra knob here basically gives you different settings. And everything's from you know higher depth to higher resonance sweep, lower depth to higher resonance sweep, Higher depth or lower resonance sweep, and lower depth or lower resonance sweep. Now, the you know the basically depth is how far the cycle is going to go up and down, basically the waves, so how deep it's going to sound, and the resonance, the arrow going across, basically says how far it sweeps. Um, it's really hard. It's really hard to explain, but once you actually hear it, you'll understand. Most phases, however, and I'm going to show you. This one, this is my Boss ME 50B I got about roughly 10 years ago. This particular one, has a, uh, this uses three knobs. It, it's got your phaser sort of section there. And yeah, you've got your three different knobs for it. You've got your rate knob, your depth knob, and your resonance. So um, it's got a bit more to it. It's a bit more variation. A lot of phasers usually have about three or four knobs. Sometimes they've got switches on it as well. The switches usually... Um, the switches are there to um, invert... or make some of the... Uh, waves the signals the waves inverse so the opposite so it sounds even more out of phase um so that's basically what they do so i'm going to show you both of these ones how they sound and you're going to hear a really really big difference between them so let me get this back on see if this works there we go that's actually not bad okay so let's get this set up Alright, so for this video I'm going to be using my uh, Mexican Fender Jazz Fretless. Um, one thing that I've found is that when you're using... Um, I'll do it a bit higher. When you're using uh, modulation effects, they work really well on a fretless. Because with the fretless, you know, it doesn't affect the tone or anything like that. It just affects the overall sound, so you can still get that kind of fretless sort of uh, sound, the semi-envelope sort of thing. And, uh, yeah, it, it just sounds really cool because there's no distinction between notes as well. So, you know, um, ugh, I just I just like it that way. So let's put it that way. I might knock this over a bit as well. There we go. So right now I'm going to be playing the... Let's make sure the signal's up. Yep, so... That's my dry signal. And this is going to be the first setting on the MXR Phase 100, which is high depth, high resonance. Can you hear the whooshing sort of sound in the background, you know?
So it sounds quite nice, actually. Um, so that's that one. The second setting, which is a, a lower depth and a higher and a high resonance suite. So it sounds a lot more subtle than the first setting. And then we've got higher depth, lower frequency sweep. So it sounds, it actually sounds really, really nice that one. And then you've got one, the last setting, which is a lower depth, lower frequency sweep. So that's basically how that one sounds. Now I I like this one because it's really it's really lush. I first tried it with a passive um, jazz bass at a local music store, and yeah, the the clerk never heard that particular effect on bass before, and he loved it. So and I loved it too. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to play on the uh, ME fifty B, and because this is a multi effect pedal, things are going to sound drastically different. It's also got a built in. Uh, uh, preamp sort of thing as well so it's going to sound like a lot of the levels are probably going to sound a bit out but um, this is basically how it sounds anyway now I've got all the settings at 12 o'clock just pointing straight upwards uh, that's the rate res that's the rate the depth and the resonance so this is how it's going to sound I'll just turn it down a bit try again so you can already hear there's a drastic difference between the two. While the phase are the phase 100 sounds a lot more lush, a lot more crisp and analog. It's because it's an analog circuit. The phaser on this multi boss multi effect is purely digital. It's all digital based, so it actually you can you can actually hear the difference between it. it doesn't sound as crisp. Um, I mean, it sounds nice for what it is, but you know it could always get better. And usually analog is better most cases. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to. So, uh, yeah, the, what I'm going to do now, the depth I'm going to put to about 3 o'clock. Sorry, not, uh, sorry, 9 o'clock. So it's going counterclockwise, there's going to be less. So you can already hear there's a lot of the things a bit lost out of it. So if I do it to about 9 o'clock, if I do it to about 3 o'clock though, basically just sticks out like, you know, well, I was going to say some stuff, but probably not safe to do so. But yeah, it really stands out. Now, if you're going to, what I'm going to do now is the resonance. So this one, it's going to sound like this. So you've got that depth in there, but it doesn't sound as lively. It doesn't sound as uh, in your face as what it could do, you know. So if I put the resonance up to about three o'clock now, so putting it clockwise. You can already hear that that just sounds way too over the top. So, with these controls, you really have to get a good, you know, it's really got to be careful to get a good sound out of it. Um, if you were to put everything all the way up, it's going to sound really weird and it's going to sound really trippy and you're probably going to hurt a lot of people's ears, but that's probably what you're aiming for. In which case, it sounds like this. You can, oh, I could already hear it starting to click and sound too loud and everything. But, you know, once you mix it up with the rate knob, you can do things like this. And just start creating weird, weird type of sounds. I'm just twirling the time knob at the moment. And if you really want... You can probably hear it in the background, actually. Yeah, see? Just sounds absolutely crazy, and you can do stuff like that, you know. So, yeah.
yeah, it's really you can get some really crazy sounds out of it. But otherwise, you know, what I would usually do, I'll put the time time knob at about one. Uh, oh, sorry, ten thirty. The feedback and the resonance level usually about one o'clock to one thirty, and it usually and you can get a pretty lush sound out of it. <laughs> Still, as you know, as cool as nice as that sounds, any day I would prefer the MXR Phase 100 over it. It's not as strong, it's a little more subtle, but you can use this for many applications, whether it be for things like, you know, prog rock to, you can even use it for reggae or dub as well. You can use it for many type of things, you know. <laughs> sounds out of it okay so you know some bands that would use phaser effects to its maximum or to you know it's the to its benefit things such as the early prog rock bands or psychedelic bands pink floyd maybe king's uh, king crimson as well um maybe some yeah i think yes might have had some in there as well oh yeah yes would have had it in there as well um and some of the more contemporary bands have used it as well incubus the Mars Volta, Chili Peppers have used a bit of phases as well, so, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's primarily a rock thing, let's put it that way. But that doesn't mean you can't use a phaser effect in anything else, you know, phaser effects in jazz, quite popular if you're using, like, a Rhodes piano or something like that, you know, Fender Rhodes, that usually works. Uh, but, you know, you just experiment and try it all out. Um, next, you know, what type of phases would be good, what brands, I would highly suggest checking out, obviously, the Phase 100 for the MMXR, Really good one. If you want something a bit simpler than that, try the Faith 90 by MXR as well. Um, another one, another brand would be the Hardwire Stereo Phaser. Really, really lush sounds out of that. And it's got a lot of controls on it for it too. Everything from a 4 to a 10 stage, stage phaser. Um, it's got a dynamic sort of function to it as well. So the harder you play, the more phase you have in it. Um, which is a really cool feature. I, I really like that one. And it sounds fantastic too. Um, the Earthquaker Devices Grand Orbiter is also a really good phaser to go for. I've looked at a, a lot of videos on that one on YouTube and it just sounds fantastic. It sounds absolutely magnificent. It's awesome. Uh, would it be another one? Um, if you're going to go for the boss ones, I highly suggest trying to get your hands on the first boss phaser, the PS1 or the PH1. I think it was called the PH1, actually. Um, because that one was based on an analog circuit as well. It sounds really, really lush, old vintage sort of style. The later ones just... Oh, I've got, I've got no idea what they're, what they're going on with those ones. Those ones, to me, sound quite horrendous, disgusting. Ugh. That's just my taste. You might like it. Fair enough. Um, are there any other ones? Not at the top of my head. But I'm pretty sure there would be more. I might make some comments later. Anyway, so that's basically how the phases go. That's how they sound. That's probably how you would use it in most contexts. Um, so yeah, get one, try it out, have fun, start tripping out. <laughs> it's always fun to do. All right, see ya.